Today I'll be talking about how you get rid of this awful message that says root user password expired. Now, when you set up a vCenter or vCSA, um, there is a default expiration date to the root password. So after X number of time, which is usually 90 days, I believe, and that's from memory, um, it expires. You should be getting messages. Of course, if you're in a small environment or even slightly larger, or if you're in a lab environment, you may be not logging in routinely into the environment. So maybe you don't see the little messages, the little reminders, and you make, or you potentially you're like me, sometimes you get a little too busy and you ignore them accidentally. And then one day you end up with this dreaded message behind me, which says root user password expired. And you go, ah, now what? So if you're not, there's uh, several ways of doing this. And I actually uh, fell into a, a real simple way earlier, because this has happened to me on this uh, server actually. And the way you do that, um, is as follows. So there's a couple steps involved. And by the way, um, we're going to have to make sure that we turn on a few things like SSH. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you in a moment. Now, when you log in, because that's one of the first questions that you're potentially wondering, well, if it's expired and you can't log in using root, how are you in there? Well, when you log in, uh, they have a service called SSO, which allows you to log in as administrator at and the domain name. So in this case here, you see it's, uh, no, I think it's off the screen, but it's actually administrator at vSphere.local. That's what I logged in to go into the VCSA or vSphere. So since I used that, I didn't really use the root and I didn't really, you know, I wasn't hindered by it. Hence, uh, it's not a huge problem, but somewhere down the road, it can be. Now, one of the places you'll probably notice it is if you want to go into the appliance management. And in order to get into here, usually I tend to log in as root. And I, to be honest, noticed that when I tried to log in as root and it said, oh, sorry, your password's expired, can't do that. And I was a little dumbfounded. The last time this happened to me, uh, maybe quite a few maybe years ago, I ended up uh, doing all kinds of acrobatics to reset the password. It worked. And then I promised I would never uh, let a password expire again. And of course, uh, apparently I managed to let one expire. So um, I tried logging as administrator at the domain name and lo and behold, it let me in. So what that tells me is that you're not completely messed up if your root password is expired. Having said that, it's still nice to re be able to reset it in a way that is not too complicated. So once you are in here, right? So in order to get to the server management, what you need to do is use the port 5480. So the way that works is you go to in the browser, basically you got HTTPS, uh, the name of your server or the IP, and then you'll do actually in this case, it, it really prefers having the name and then uh, colon and 5480, that will get you into the login for the server management. So what you wanna do is go where it says access. And what you'll notice is the SSH login and the bash shell while we're at it are both disabled. So what we're gonna do for now is we're gonna go ahead and enable them. So simply click on edit on the upper right of it, the screen and put these to enable and it's going to ask you how long you want to keep this on in minutes so i'm going to give itself about you know 60 minutes or so that should work and there you go so now that brings me to the second step now we have more options buddy you can download it it looks like this and what you do is you basically put in the ip address or the host name this in this case it is the vcsa or the v uh, center. So that's what you're putting here, port 22. Now we just opened that port in effect by turning on the SSH login. So I've already pre-configured it. So if you're seeing this and it says login as, that means you've successfully opened not only the port, but the service is on. And in that case, you could go ahead and log in as root. Now you're probably saying, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's expired. This is not going to work. Well, that's what I discovered a bit earlier. I'm sure it's documented somewhere. It was just my, uh, hadn't tried it before. 
um, but if it is expired, it will still let you log in as root with the expired password. So as soon as you put in the expired password after root here, it will actually tell you, hey, this is expired. What is the expired password? And now it will force you to put in a new password twice, of course, and in effect, resetting it. So that is the way around this problem. So that's uh, much easier than using other scripts and trying to do other things, just do it this way. Now, if you wanted to prevent the password from expiring or changing and so forth, you can do that. Now, for security reasons, I have to remind you to go back after this and turn off the SSH login. And as you saw, the bash uh, shell will also basically revert back to the disabled uh, after 60 minutes, as I've said it. So in this case, there's really nothing uh, more to do unless, of course, you're uh, a little bit paranoid and think that within the 60 minutes, something dreadful will happen, which in which case you can go and disable that as soon as you're finished with it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log in. And now that we've changed the password, we can now log in. Let's see if I can get in. Okay, so first thing you need to do is get into the shell. So this is why we enabled it. So we are now there. And the command is C-H-A-G-E, or C-H-A-G. And if you do a dash small L, so I remembered it was a one for some reason. I've been trying this and I couldn't understand why it wasn't working. And then I had to look it up and turns out it's an L. And L looks like a one, so... That was not great. So if I go back and do chh minus l for list and root, it's going to show me some information. So when was the last time it got changed, which May 19th is today, and it shows you when it expires, if it's in the inactive, and so forth. So you see the information there. Now, if you want to change it, um, you'll be able to go and get the information. Um, I mean, at this point, I'm already set properly. What you could do is you could actually go and uh, give it some information as to when you want it to be changed. So you could set the, the I guess, the, the, the specific date that you want it to ex, uh, expire, or you can tell it in uh, how many days. So that would be how you would change that. And, of course, once you're done, go ahead and just do exit and close this. And make sure that you go back and disable the SSH service since you probably no longer need it. And at this point, you're all good to go. The route's been changed. You now have access to it again in case you need it. And of course, uh, for security reasons, uh, it is recommended that you keep some expiration date. Maybe make yourself a note somewhere if you're not logging in to these often. Or uh, push it off if it's a lab environment, you're not too concerned, it's behind a firewall and so forth. Uh, then use this to extend it. So I'm Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob. I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave some comments below. I really hope that this has helped you perhaps tell us about your environment and how you got stuck with this problem. Love to hear the crazy stories out there. And uh, check us out at ctobob.com. I also have some additional little articles. You can also check us out on Twitter. I do uh, tend to repost uh, you know, interesting articles and so forth once in a while. So you can reach me there as well. And... Um, Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. See you in the next video.